What I'm going to show you today is something that has been a key part of my mixing setup for the past two decades. And I came up with this system as a solution to some of the most common mixing challenges we face. How to ensure consistency and how to create a solid gain structure every time. And, but also to make sure that my mixes don't just sound great during the mixing phase, but translate well into loudness. The truth is, no matter how good a mix sounds initially, it has to translate well after mastering. So my goal is always to ensure that every mix is optimized for the final mastered level so that it sounds great when the audience hears it. To achieve this, I developed a strategy that helps me to anticipate how my mix will behave when made louder. What I do involves five plugins and I look for the same thing in these five plugins every time. And at the heart of everything is the Waves L2 limiter, which I always set to minus six. Any great limiter will do, but I'm so familiar with this one, and my goal here is to keep everything the same for every mix. I also like the L2 slider, which works as both a threshold and a makeup gain control. And by watching this meter, I know that my overall gain structure and the amount I'm feeding into the mix bus are consistent. And the trick is to look for rapid and clean movements on the gain reduction meter, you know, one decibel maximum every now and then, and driven by the kick and snare. You know, you never want to see your bass or your vocal driving your mix bus, compressor or limiter. The second plugin is a loudness meter, the Waves WLM. Before I start any mix, I always ask my clients what loudness level they're aiming for when the song is eventually mastered. If they're looking for a semi-loud master, you know, around minus 12 LUFS, I'll try to test drive my mix at that level. And if the client is looking for a super loud master, I might use two limiters, you know, bringing up the level in small steps. You always get cleaner and better results. When I'm done with my mix, I remove all of this before sending it off to be mastered, if it's mastered by somebody else, you know. So the big question now is, do I mix with this on the whole time? Sometimes I keep the first L2 on throughout the entire mix, while the other limiter, so the second one, might be switched on sometimes momentarily to see what happens when I'm pushing my mix to its limit. And the most valuable part of this strategy is that you can quickly identify any problems that arise, you know, whether it's a frequency spike or distortion or imbalances in the mix. And this gives you the chance to go back and fix those issues ahead of time. And I also talk about this topic in my ebook, The Art of Compression. And if you want to have a free copy of it, just write free ebook in comments below and I'll send it to you as soon as possible. The other two plugins are only there as my support system. I have a FabFilter MB that works as a goalkeeper. If something gets too loud in any part of the frequency range, it will catch it and bring it down. So it's more like a multiband limiter before the limiters. But also it's a good visual cue because if you ever see a massive reduction in any of the bands, you know that something is probably wrong in the mix because it shouldn't give you such massive spikes. It's really important to have visual cues. After the FabFilter MB, I have my middle and sides compressor doing the same thing, but keeping an eye on the center and the sides instead of different frequency bands. So both of them are kind of visual cues, but they also help to, to keep the mix tight and they support the limiters that come after. And I'm really happy that this channel is supported by Pulsar Modular. As I've mentioned before, they make a really good sidecar plugin called the P455, which is one of my favorite plugins this year. But they also have the P42, which is a really cool coloration box. So anyway, thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions. And yeah, hope to see you in the next video.